So how do you crack passwords with Hashcat? Hey, I'm WJ Pierce for CyberGraded and today we're going to be looking at exactly how we do that. So there's a couple of things that I want to explain first, as is with any technical video, it's good to have a bit of a kind of prerequisite when it comes to knowledge and the tools you're using and kind of the theory behind it. But if you want to jump straight ahead to the tutorial, I will put a timestamp down below so you can skip all the explanations and just go straight to actually how to crack the passwords with Hashcat. Of course, before I begin, I would like to mention that you should have permission before you go cracking passwords. We're actually going to be cracking passwords that I've made today, so, you know, it's totally fine. But if you are going to be doing it, again, just make sure you have permission. We're going to be using Power OS today, which is a Linux distribution geared towards offensive and defensive security. If you don't have Power OS already, I have a video on how you can install it in about five minutes using VMware. So first things first, right at the top, what is Hashcat? You might have heard of it, it's basically the world's fastest password cracker. As I said, it's for Windows, Mac and Linux OS. The great thing about it is it's open source with an MIT license, which means that for personal use, we can use it. The next two things I want to explain is what a hash is and what a word list is. So we're going to be using both those things today. We're going to be using hashed passwords and we're going to be using a word list to feed into Hashcat. And to explain those, I think it's better that we jump on the PC and I can give you a bit of a visual reference to follow along and you get a bit of a better understanding when you can actually see what a hash password is and what a word list actually looks like instead of me just talking to you like this. Last thing before I start the lesson, if you're not subscribed, it would be really, really cool if you did subscribe. Uh, I'm only at like 39 or something. It'd be quite cool to hit 100. So yeah, if you're not subscribed and you want to for a kind of consistent cybersecurity and tech content, that would be really wicked. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I said I wanted to explain was what a word list is. Now, it's kind of self-explanatory what a word list is, and chances are, if you've clicked on this video, you kind of probably already know what a word list is. But for the uninitiated, I'll explain it. It's pretty easy to understand. It's kind of in the name. It's a bit of a giveaway. A word list is, believe it or not, a list of words. Now, why is that important? Kind of the best explanation I've found on the internet to what actually a word list is as well is on Berserk Zero's GitHub. So this kind of explains why they're important. So do you know what the world's most common passwords are? Do you know what they look like? And you'll want to avoid them to be secure. So think of the world's most common passwords like someone's name, someone's birthday, football, rugby, hockey, car, car one, two, three. All a word list is, is a collection of those words. And all Hashcat is gonna be doing is taking a list of those words, running it against a list of hashes and finding out if one of them matches or not. So on this GitHub, there is actually a huge word list. Now, there are hundreds of word lists out there. Some are more popular than others. You've probably heard of the Rock U word list. That's kind of the biggest word list in the cybersecurity community. But look at this one here. There's over 12,000 passwords. Well, not passwords, but words. But they might be passwords. That's the thing. And you can come down and basically you're going to be feeding this into Hashcat. Hashcat is going to be able to read the hashed versions of these passwords, which I'll explain in a minute. And it's going to run them against the actual password and try and find a match. So here we've got things like someone's name, an animal, flowers. So I wanted to explain what hashes are or what a hashing algorithm is or what a hash password is. Hashes are essentially the output of a hashing algorithm like MD5 or SHA-256. The, it's an algorithm that takes your plain text word and effectively codifies it, scrambles it up, and it aims to produce a hash value or a message digest for any given piece of text. For example, if we take the word subscribe, which you should do, by the way, and you spell it right, you can generate an MD5 of your hash. So if you type subscribe, you're always going to get this. Now, this is where the big problem comes in. If you figure out how passwords are saved, say like there's a data breach and you figure out how the passwords are saved and you know that it's saved in MD5, you can just put it through one of these kind of reverse generator things and you can get the plain text password because subscribe is always going to be this unique string of text. Now, this is where salting comes in, which kind of masks your password. That's a whole different video, but that's something that you should be doing if you're saving customer passwords effectively. 
Okay, so if you've skipped ahead and you're looking for the meat of this video and you're just looking how to crack the passwords with Hashcat, this is what you're looking for, so don't go anywhere. If you have watched the Hashcat explanation and the word list explanation, this is where we actually start to begin cracking the passwords. So what I've done here is I've just launched my ParaOS virtual machine. Again, if you don't have a copy of this already, it's really easy to get and I've got a video on how you can get it. So now we are in the correct environment. We want to launch the terminal. <clears throat> just on the desktop is fine. If you prefer to work from the root, that's also fine. If you prefer to work from documents, wherever you want. I tend to work on the desktop just for these kind of explanation videos because it gives you everything you need on one screen in both the GUI and on the terminal as well. So I think it makes sense for kind of going into your head. Um, the next thing I'm going to open is this text file. This text file is called commands and it's all a list of the commands that we're going to need. Um, the reason I've got this is because the way that my microphone is set up is means that I'm not incredibly quick at typing because I have to kind of reach around it. So I've got these so I can copy and paste them so you don't have to painfully watch me type. It also means that I can just drop all these commands in the description below. So if you don't want to type them either, you can just copy and paste, which makes life a lot easier for both of us. So the first thing we're going to need to do now that we've got the terminal here is locate where our word list is stored on the machine. Now, there's a way to do that, and it's a Linux command called locate, and it basically just shows you where stuff is on your machine. It's pretty handy. So we're going to locate word list, and we'll see all the word lists are here. And as you can see, it's right here under user share word list rock you. So you're going to need to copy and paste that. But again, I've actually already copy and pasted it into my commands document, so you don't have to watch me painfully navigate around this microphone to my keyboard, which is cool. So now we've located the word list. The next thing we want to do is actually create a text file with passwords that are hashed in an MD5 format in it. Now your passwords again might not be MD5, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to do MD5 because it doesn't take like very long to crack MD5 passwords. So for a YouTube video, it kind of makes sense. So again, I've already got one. Um, I've called it target hashes. And basically, it's just a text file with all my hashed passwords in it. Again, I'm going to provide this here down below in the description. So you can just copy and paste in. But if you've got your own hashes that you want to crack, or you've been given them by someone else, then you can just put them in here. But this is how you would do it. You can also go onto Google, like I showed you before, and create your own. So you would type in a word, it would give you the MD5 hash output, and then you could just copy and paste it into your text file. The only caveat I would say is that the text file needs to have more than five passwords in it for Hashcat to recognize it as something that it needs to crack. So if you're only trying to crack one password, just shove a bunch of dummy passwords in there as well, and that'll ensure that Hashcat actually recognizes it as a file that it needs to crack. Okay, the next command that we need is hashcat dot h and this basically explains what hashcat is. So as you can see it's sort of like the help command dash h meaning help and if you type the name of the program and then dash h it will give you, give you an explanation of what the program does and certain switches and flags that you can use with it. So you can use this for any kind of uh, software or tool within Pirate OS or most Red Hat servers as well support it which is cool so this what we're looking at right here is basically a list of algorithms that hashcat can use so it's really cool um you know you can do raw hash or salted versions you've got router algorithms on here you've got a bunch of different kind of md5 styles but as i said before we're just cracking straight up pure old school md5 passwords so we're looking for the zero flag the next thing we're going to need to take note of for our final command to actually begin the crack is the type of attack, so attack mode. So we're not doing brute force, we're not doing combinator. We've got a word list today, but we're adding no rules with it. A word list with rules would basically be like kind of adding parameters into it. So yes, we're doing a word list attack, but we want to ignore A, B, and C and focus on X, Y, Z. I'll do a separate video on that. It kind of it can get a bit complicated for the purpose of just a straight up password crack. So because we're doing a word list, we need to focus on this switch here, which is dash A. So we'll do a click clear just to make the screen a bit nicer. So this is our final command that we need. As I said, we've got hashcat, so we're invoking hashcat. 
uh, we're adding the switches that we've just spoke about and then we've got cracked which basically means that's what i want the output or the output text file to be called we've got target hashes which is the file that we made with the hashes in it and then we've got the location of the word list so if we hit enter you'll see that it hasn't worked now why hasn't it worked it hasn't worked because i've already cracked these passwords on this machine and what Hashcat does if you've already cracked passwords is it puts them in a pot file. It basically says, I don't need to crack these. I've already cracked them. I'm going to save you some time and not crack them for you, which is good in most circumstances. But if you're trying to crack the same password twice and it doesn't work, this is why. So we'll bring that command up again. And we're just going to disable that pot file that I spoke about. So you can add the flag uh, hyphen hyphen pot file hyphen disable. And we hit that. And we can see that it's running now. Uh, it's made the cracked text file already and it's finished. Again, these are, MD5 is a really old um, algorithm style, so it shouldn't take very long. The passwords didn't have any salt on them and they were off a really common word list. So with this kind of base knowledge, you can kind of expand upon it, try different switches, try different flags, and you can see the status here is cracked. So if we double click it on the GUI, just to have a wee look easier than catting it, we can see that the first one was cracked, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The second one was cracked, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and on and on and on. So you can really see, like, what did that take? It took like two seconds to crack like, over seven passwords. So I know they're really obvious passwords from a really obvious word list in a really outdated algorithm, but you can begin to see the potential of how powerful this tool really is. Uh, and that's pretty much it. If you want to see some more videos on Hashcat, some more complicated ones, some different Hashcat algorithms, some, uh, sorry, hashing algorithms, uh, let me know. And remember, subscribe and like. That would really, really help me out. Okay, thanks very much. See you in the next one.